So you took my first line, Tom. Um, when you think of landscape architecture, you probably think of gardening, <laughs> be beautifully manicured lawns, and possibly an encounter with an amazing city park. While this is certainly what landscape architects do, as we move forward, it's important that we consider not only how landscapes look and how people use them, but also how they function as ecological systems. What this requires is for us to build living infrastructures. And we begin to do this by making more symbiotic boundaries between human beings and natural systems. We can think of our current methods of environmental construction as um, creating a prosthetic when a human being loses a limb. It looks like the previous limb, but the function is minimal. The ability to feel and react are missing, and possibly the fingers are stiff. Environmental sensing, computation, and robotics begin to change this relationship, and they allow us to construct landscapes that are natural or extra-natural extensions of the environments they occupy. We can begin this process in two ways. The first is how we visualize and understand landscapes. We do this with models, simulations, and animations that give, built from data that give us a deeper understanding of how, la uh, how landscapes work. This deeper level of understanding allows us to make more nuanced decisions uh, when, we, when we construct landscapes, particularly in terms of how they relate to the plants and natural processes uh, within, that, within that space. The second way computation plays a role is through faster and more holistic uh, decision making. Typically, when we observe landscapes, we observe them over years, decades, and centuries. We then make very large infrastructural moves th that are uh, aimed to either counter or promote a very specific behavior. But with current technologies, we're ab uh, particularly using environmental sensing and monitoring, we're able to make decisions about landscapes very quickly, um, to alter the ecologies in very small ways and nudge them in very specific directions. Using this methodology, we're developing prototypes that begin to modify ecologies in situ, such as robots that traverse the bayous, searching for detrimental processes that cause the absence of oxygen in the water column, a phenomenon known as hypoxia. When these robots sequester this oxygen-robbing process, they remove it from the uh, ecological system. And by responding to the, uh, uh, this process specifically, they act as agents within that system. We can, we can look at many of our cities today, and we understand that they're built in opposition to the landscapes they occupy. We make concessions for the environment, but we rarely create behaviors that are in tune with the plants and animal species within those environments. It is possible, though, for us to begin building much more responsive landscapes. This prototype of a spillway uh, basically splices the levee. Um, it takes the sediment-laden waters pouring down the river, and functions much like the printhead on an inkjet printer. Using this process, we use the power of the river, and by monitoring downstream, we're able to build an autonomous set of logics into the spillway gates that open and close the gates to divert water to either cut or build land. By building models and simulations of this process, we're able to use this to build scaffoldings for future ecologies that may grow in these landscapes, while also looking at recorded histories and future projections that might allow those, uh, those landscapes to form so that they protect cities from future severe weather events. These, these landscapes become dynamic, and they're built from the processes of the bayou, but they're curated directly from the behaviors of the spillways. So we're using computation to imagine new landscapes, not new landscape form, but new processes that build a whole range of new landscape types. We imagine these landscapes as ecologically fit places, but they may be like nothing we've ever seen before. They're performing as well as a natural ecology, but they're built from processes that we design. So taking this into consideration, environmental sensing, computation, and robotics become a new toolkit for landscape architects ideally enabling us to design with a much more environmentally, or excuse me, holistic environmental ethos. Thank you. Can you bring my mic up? Thank you. Uh, first of all, let me apologize for being such a dick. Um, it was an accident. Here's the good news is editing 
It's really great. So I'll disappear and you will <laughs> remain triumphant. Um, uh, so a question, how new is this? Um, that's pretty sophisticated looking stuff. And uh, I haven't really ever seen it before, which is why we picked you. Um, <laughs> So, t I mean, how new, how novel this is, and, and how did it, where did it kind of start? Well, I mean, um, I think I'm an uh, anomaly in landscape architecture. This idea that I, I have this kind of belief that we are manipulating these systems to kind of this level of degree, I think, is one that's, that's a new idea. Um, but I guess in my approach, I'm thinking that um, we're doing this anyways kind of by accident and that we need to be kind of more active agents in that process and take ownership of those. So I think it, I mean, there's very few la other landscape architects that I know of that are doing what I'm doing. Which is what I suspected. It's a thing, but pretty much your yeah. thing. Maybe. <laughs> Perhaps it'll be Possibly. more of a thing for other people after they see this talk. Um, one other quick question, and that is, um, you alluded to in your talk the fact that you may have technologies with the, the prototype um, solenoid uh, sort of slurry dispersing things that you made mm -hmm. uh, to sort of print land. And you know, I've told you this a million times that, that my ears really perked up when you said print land. What, that's a pretty radical idea. Can you just quickly explain what that means? Um, well, I mean, it's, it's basically uh, because we're, we're not directly or explicitly printing exactly the forms we want. Mm -hmm but we're trying to take into account uh, a whole range of factors. So these are kind of a multiple set of goals. And um, by simply diverting water in very specific ways, based on the kind of rec recorded set of histories we've seen of how this behaves, we're able to, in a sense, guide um, you know, massive amounts of sediment in very specific directions. Um, and then, I mean, I mean, it's basically what, the, what it says it is. It's printing where we want, want the land to be and with very, very kind of tight accuracy close to the gates and much, kind of much more fuzzy accuracy as we move away from them. Great. And if anyone has a backyard that they want to improve with totally. like roses and Slip and stuff, slide. He's the guy. No, thanks so much. I really Thank appreciate you. it. <laughs>